I'm getting a thumbs up. So we got amplification. Let's have class. Good morning. This is our class on Daniel, study of Daniel. We're in lesson four this morning, but let's do a quiz over last week's lesson. Everybody got a copy of the quiz? You're in the back. John's ready to make sure everybody's equipped with the quiz. Well, here we go. Welcome to all of you, by the way, who are watching online. We're glad to have you. It's a rainy day here in Choctaw, Oklahoma. We're glad for the rain. We've seen the time when it was so dry we had to worry about fire. So I don't think that's going to be a problem today. All right, quiz number one. The prophet blank said God would send Judah into Babylonian captivity because of their sins. Which, which prophet? Well, actually, there, there were several that, that did that, but the one we focused on was Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is also the one who said it'll be for 70 years. And then they'll come back. Jeremiah is also the one who said, when you're there, go ahead and make a life for yourselves because I'm bringing you back after 70 years. Jeremiah had quite a bit to say about it. Number two, Nebuchadnezzar took items from the blank back to Babylon. The temple took them out of the temple. Number three, Nebuchadnezzar ordered that young men from families of blank and blank, nobles and royalty, no, nobility and royalty, however you want to write that. <clears throat> he ordered that young men from families of royalty and nobility who showed good promise should be taken to Babylon to train to serve him. Number four, Daniel resolved not to eat food from the blank table, king's table. That was the best they had, they thought. And he refused it because it would blank him, defile. He must have known something about the law. Number five, even when the chief official refused to change the order, Daniel got one of the blank to give him what would you put in that blank? Overseers. He was an overseer. The, the, the overseer wasn't over the chief official, but the chief official had an overseer in charge of these young men. And when he couldn't get the chief official to change it, he talked to the overseer, made a deal with him to give him a diet of blank and blank. Vegetables and water. Sounds more like a prison sentence to me. But... It did him good. And remember, he asked for that because he apparently was confident that there would be no defilement in anything they would offer by way of vegetables and water. So that's what that was all about. Everybody come in. Get a, get a worksheet for today and get a, uh, a quiz. We'll start over. Get everybody. I didn't get as many laughs on that as I thought I would. Okay, yeah, mercy laugh. Thank you. Number six, Daniel's decision is remarkable because, and there were several reasons why we talked about this was remarkable, but what are some of those reasons? Anybody? Reason number one we're going to talk about is? He was in better health than the kid Okay, he, he was in better health, but, but the fact that he was willing to ask that's what we're talking about here, not the result, but the circumstances involving why it was remarkable for him to ask for such a thing. He was young, young guy. What was he possibly doing by doing this? He was jeopardizing his life. He didn't know what was going to happen. He was in a strange culture, strange land. This might have been an offensive question. You can see how it would have come. Oh, you're, you're too good to eat from the king's table. Well, we'll just take your head. Put that on the king's table. Yeah, really. What a centerpiece that would make. Wow. So he, he didn't know. 
Judah had also lost to the Babylonians, and they lost because of their, their immorality, their idolatry, their evil, their wickedness, their, how else can you say that? What's another good word for that stuff? Their iniquity. Did I say iniquity? That's a good word for sin. And so he was being, possibly being considered presumptuous to do that kind of a thing. It's remarkable that he did it, but he did it. He did it because it was right. I think he did it because of his uh, commitment to God, and that's what I think is shown when he didn't want to defile himself. So there's our quiz. Anything on the quiz? Anything you want to go back and talk about? John? About that much, we're out of. We got one of the one that was in the middle, but we got some more of these. Okay. The Does everybody have a worksheet? The for now, but anybody okay. coming in and the quiz is the one we just finished. So okay, we're out of those. This is the worksheet. Yours won't have the red thing. Oh, the, uh, Debbie needs one over there. You need a worksheet. What number two was? Debbie needs a worksheet back in the corner. Are there any of those left? What's number two? Yeah. Oh, what's number two? I'm sorry. Huh? Number two. Nebuchadnezzar took items from the blank back to Babylon, and it's temple. The answer is temple. All right, any other alibis? Any other blanks needed to fill in? Let's do this as we begin uh, this morning's lesson, let's read from chapter 1 and chapter 2, a couple of brief passages. Chapter 1, I need a reader for 17 to 20. Who would like to do that? Chapter 1 of Daniel, 17 to 20. All right, Larry's got that, and then chapter 2, 1 through 9. All right, Mike. And when, when you're ready, Larry, we'll just take off reading this. This will be kind of a an introduction to what we're talking about in this morning's lesson. 17 through 20, chapter 1, 17 through 20 of Daniel. As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and intelligence and every branch a little of truth and wisdom. And Daniel even understood all kinds of visions and dreams. Then at the end of the days, which the king had specified, for presenting them, the commander of the officials presented them before Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and out of them, all, not one, was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's personal service. As for every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king consulted them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and conjurers who were in all his realm. And then you continued until the fourth year of Cyrus the king. Excellent, thank you. Mike? In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, so sorcerers, astrologers, to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, <coughs> I have had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and he will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I have, I will have you cut into pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more they replied, let the king tell his servants the dream and he will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. All right. Thank you, guys. Number one, at the final oral exam, Daniel and his friends stood blank all the others. 
above. They stood above all the others. The king talked with them. Isn't that interesting? Talking, just talking with these young guys. And realizes they're ten times better than the others. Nebuchadnezzar asked his wise men to tell him what he had blanked. What he had dreamed and what it, what it meant or its interpretation. If they do not, he will blank them all. Kill them all. Doesn't that kind of sound like he, he doesn't feel like he's ever really benefited from these guys much at all? I mean, if you had this group of wise men and they'd been really beneficial to you, and you'd, they'd been beneficial to the, to the prior uh, administration, I guess we'll say. Because Nebuchadnezzar, he's a new king now. And he's, he's saying of these guys, tell this or you're all going to die. It's not like, you guys have been great through the years. I really appreciate it. I've got a lot of confidence in you, and I hope you can tell me this. But be okay if you can't. I'll understand. No? I think you guys are a bunch of liars anyway. I think that's what he's saying. John? Liars. Should be one be enough, wouldn't it? Instead of a bunch of them? What's that? If they were so wise, wouldn't one be enough instead of the whole group of them? Well, you, you would think that would make sense. But he had a bunch of them. Government job, you know. <laughs> Lots of benefits. Except you die if you don't do it right. Number three. When Daniel learns of the problem... He asked the king for blank time and then blanks to God, praise to God. God blanks the dream, reveals the dream and interpretation to Daniel. And Daniel, what's he do next? He prays again, thank you, Lord. Lord, please give me the interpretation and the dream. And God does it. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the dream and the interpretation. This is a young man who relies on God. By the way, uh, I don't know why some of the blanks are really long for little words and really short for big words. But I'm sure you'll meet the challenge with a good attitude. Yes. I believe they would have. That was, that was the sentence for all of them, and they were part of that group. And when Daniel talks to the king, the king doesn't say, oh, you, you guys don't need to worry about it. You're, you're a different group. Daniel says, man, give me some time. Give me some time. And then as soon as he asks for time and he gets the time, that's when he starts praying. And God answers the prayer. All right, number four and five. Daniel goes to the king and tells him that the blank of blank has revealed to him the dream. The God of heaven, he doesn't take any credit for himself. He says, the God of heaven's revealed to me the dream and its meaning. In his dream, the king saw a great blank. You could put image, you could put statue. Both those words are evident from the text. Part of the statue, we've got the part on the left and the interpretation on the right. So there is a head of, and we haven't read this, but if you go down in chapter 2, verse 29, Daniel begins to interpret it. And in 31, he gets to the meat of the dream. You, O king, were looking, and behold, there was a single great statue. That statue, which was large and of extraordinary splendor, was standing in front of you, and its appearance was awesome. You think Daniel went around saying that? Awesome, man. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. So there's your blank right there for the first one. The head of gold. Its breast and its arms of silver. Its belly and its thighs of 
bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And he says, you continued looking until a stone was cut without hands. And what did it do to the image? The stone cut without hands struck the image where? On the feet. Got a head of gold, breast and arms of silver, belly and thighs of Bronze legs of iron, and the feet are iron and clay, and so this stone is cut without hands, and it strikes the image on those feet that are of iron and clay. What do you suppose happens to the image? The iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, all of them were crushed. This is verse 35 all at the same time and became like chaff. What's chaff? Okay, when, when you harvest wheat, the kernel of the wheat that is edible, that you make into flour, is inside a husk, and you have to separate that. That's, have you ever heard of a winnowing fork? It's, it's in prophecy, and, and Jesus alluded to it. You, you take that winnowing fork, looks like a big upside-down rake, and you've got a pile of the grain that's still in the husk and you put your fork in and you shake it around and you throw it up. You throw the grain up and in the process of all that, the grain and the husk separates and the wind will blow the chaff away because it's lightweight. And then when you, you just keep doing that until all the chaff is gone, wouldn't that have been a great job to have? You need a respirator, eye protection, something. Then they did a lot of hard work back in the day. But that's, that's what chaff is. And it says, all of this material from this image became like chaff, blown away in the wind. But the stone that struck the statue, what happened to it? It became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. If you think about what Isaiah said about the Mountain of the house of the Lord being established in what city? Jerusalem. That, that all ties in together. It's all part of the same, same vision, same fact that's going to take place in history at this point anyway. Now, the interpretation. Verse 36, this was the dream. Now we'll tell its interpretation before the king. You, O king, are the king of kings to whom God of heaven has given a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Whatever the sons of men dwell, or wherever the sons of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, or the birds of the sky, he's given them into your hand and has caused you to rule over them. You are the head of gold. So the head of gold represents Nebuchadnezzar, the, the kingdom of Babylon. That's the interpretation. You'd write, out, write that out to the right of the head of gold. Head of gold is Babylon. And then he says, verse 39, After you will arise another kingdom inferior to you, and then another third kingdom of bronze, which will rule over all the earth. Then there will be a fourth kingdom as strong as iron, and as much as iron crushes and shatters all things, so like iron that breaks in pieces, it will crush and break all these things in pieces. And then he talks about the feet mingled with clay. It's iron mingled with clay, partly of potter's clay, partly of iron. It will be a divided kingdom, but it will have in it the toughness of iron inasmuch as you saw the iron mixed with common clay. As the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of pottery, so some of the kingdom will be strong and part of it will be brittle. And in that you saw iron mixed with common clay, they will combine with one another and in the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, even as iron does not combine with pottery. And he'll go on, we'll talk about the, where, how he goes on from here. But, but this is the nature of the image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And remember, he doesn't even know what the dream is. Daniel is revealing the dream to him because God is telling Daniel. And then... We've got, have you got all the interpretations written out 
to the right of the, the parts of the, okay. So the first one is Babylon. What kingdom comes after Babylon? What nation takes charge next? We got a, got a little clue when uh, Larry read the last verse of chapter 1 because Daniel continues until the reign of Darius. And Darius was a Persian king. So after Babylon comes Persia, the nation of Persia. If you've ever seen the, the show Oklahoma, maybe you remember the Persian goodbye. I don't know if that came from Persia or not, but the guy in the show who was the salesman was evidently from this part of the world, and so he said, I'm going to give you a Persian goodbye. After Persia, who came next? The Greeks. The Greeks. What part of the image represented the Greeks? The bronze, the belly and thighs of bronze. And after the Greeks came Rome, the iron, the strength, conquered the whole world as it was at the time. And then if you know any of the history of the Roman Empire, it was very much divided in the end. Uh, immorality was one of its biggest problems. Uh, it's, it's much like America seems to be today. Drop down to verse 44, chapter 2, 44. Daniel says, giving the interpretation that God gave him, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms but it will itself endure forever. Inasmuch as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it crushed the iron and the bronze and the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. So the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. There must have been something about what Daniel was telling Nebuchadnezzar that Nebuchadnezzar knew, this is right, that is the dream. I don't know, you ever had a dream and you can't remember all the parts of it, but the more you think about it, the more it comes back to you. Or, or you may not even be thinking about it. You're just doing something and somebody mentions something. Like maybe in your dream you were in a car and somebody says, oh, uh, there's, a, there's a car and it just occurs to you somehow. Oh, yeah, I, I dreamed about a car last night. I just thought about that. Dreams are weird things. I don't know where they come from or what they're all about. I don't know if they all have meaning or not. Some people say that they do. I think it's just my crazy mind on drugs or something after I've gone to sleep. But I don't know what my mind does, but I have some weird dreams. I'm thankful I don't have the typical nightmare. My nightmares are uh, not being ready for something. That's, that, that's the worst part of my dreams and it's awful and we'll have to have a we'll have a dream discussion sometime all right so that's the interpretation so let's go to the, the section down at the bottom of the uh, of four and five where it says this kingdom will be established oh i'm sorry did you get the one above that a blank cut out without hands okay stone there you go you guys are on top of things this kingdom will be established during the days of the last of these kingdoms, which was the blank blank. And the last one is the Roman Empire. If it had been established during one of the earlier blanks, kingdoms. Now remember, Stafford is all about repetition. He's, he's putting that idea of kingdoms before us for a reason. But if it was established during one of the earlier kingdoms, the statue would not have been able to reach its final stage. Number six, during the days of the Old Testament, God had a blank. God had a kingdom. Uh, take a look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter, let's see, 1 Samuel chapter 8. I think 
that'll work. This is where uh, God and Samuel are having a discussion about what the Israelites want to do at that point. Do you remember what the Israelites wanted? They wanted a king. And so this is what we read in 1 Samuel chapter 8. And verse 6. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king. They have rejected him from being king. He had a kingdom. They were his subjects. But he says they have rejected him from being king. Like all the deeds which they've done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, and that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Why is Daniel in Babylon? Because Israel continued the, the habitual rejection of God up into Daniel's day. They were rejecting him in Samuel's day. And God said, Samuel, give him a king. And so he anointed Saul to be king. Who came after Saul? David came after Saul. Who came after David? Solomon. How long did each one of those guys reign? Forty years. So there's 100, or 120 years of, a, of an Israel united under each one of those three kings. And then after Solomon, Rehoboam took the throne and the kingdom became divided that's where you have the ten northern tribes going off who were later taken by Assyria because of their idolatry and their evil. And now Judah has been taken because of its evil and its idolatry. And that's why Daniel is in Babylon. Just a continuing issue with the people of God. Larry? It's really hard for me today to look back on that city and look and see they had the best of everything. They had God as the ruler. Right. So why would they want a king? You know? I, I know. It makes perfect sense. However, we ask the same kind of questions today. Why don't people want to tell the truth? Why don't people want to just be honest? Why don't people want to live moral lives? Why do they want to dabble in alcohol and drugs and dabble in sexual immorality and dabble in all the things that destroy us? It's, it's self-destructive behavior, but it's attractive to us. And, of course, we're talking about everybody else because none of us ever do any of that kind of stuff. It's all them. At least that's the way we think of it sometimes. But... Each of us have our part in the temptations of this world, and it's when we as a nation fall to it that we really get ourselves into trouble. I, I don't know. There's no way to judge uh, from my perspective, from any individual's perspective. God's the one who knows. I do take comfort, however, in things like what happened when, uh, you know, when Chick-fil-A got caught in the middle of that uh, controversy. What happened the next day? Everybody wanted a chicken sandwich the next day. It's like, all right, oh, yeah, that's, this is great. There are people who believe in what's right. I don't know what everybody thought who lined up to get a chicken sandwich, but they were saying something. They were communicating something. And I hope there's still some of that left. But uh, if you listen to the media, well, don't listen to the media. Don't listen to the media. Prerequisites through history before empires fell. Fortunately, we're checking some of those boxes as far as mass shedding of innocent blood, you look at abortion rates, the destruction of marriage, the openness of people's, you know, weird relationships, whatever you want to call them. I mean, those are, those are like prerequisites right. for other kingdoms that fell, the immorality and the shedding of innocent blood. And there's a whole lesson I've heard on it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you read the first chapter of Romans and it's like Paul's describing there what's happening in our country right now where people are just getting dumber and dumber and dumber because they're adopting these kinds of ideas. And it's, it's crazy. But think about this. What's this all about? God is telling us through a heathen pagan king whom he gives this dream, he's telling us through him. Yeah, I'm in control. And I'm setting up my kingdom. 
I could say to Israel, you guys are junk. I'm done with you. Be gone. But he doesn't. He says, I'm wiping you out, except for the ones I'm taking to a place where I'm going to keep you. Where are you going to keep us? In Babylon. In Babylon? You've got to be kidding. Heathen, pagan nation. Yeah, I'm taking a, a remnant into Babylon. And while you're there, just hang on tight. Go ahead and live your lives. 70 years, I'm bringing you back. What do you mean you're bringing us back? Yeah, Cyrus, is going to, he's going to be the new king, Persian king, heathen, pagan king. He's going to finance your return to rebuild the temple and rebuild the walls. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. The, the, oh, that's exactly what happened. God never gives up on faithful people, even if there's just a few. He never gives up. You be the one. You be the one who stays faithful, no matter what everybody else says. I mean, look at this wonderful group of people here right now. You guys are fantastic. I just think you're great. Every single one of you, faithful to the Lord. You're here to study his word, to, to put that word into your lives and be lights in the world for Jesus Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords. But when we're done here this morning, we're going to get in our cars and go home. And then tomorrow we're going to go to work. We're going to go to school. We're going to go to all kinds of places where you may be it. Go to work cows. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't even go into that. <laughs> but that's, this is the world. Remember, we're in the world. All right, let's finish it up down here at the bottom. Finish the worksheet anyway. And number six, during the days of the Old Testament, God had a kingdom. We just did that one. It was a blank kingdom. Think about what we're talking about here. Was it a spiritual kingdom? It's a physical kingdom. He had a physical kingdom. He had the, the physical nation of Israel. He was reigning over them. They rejected him as king. And so he had a kingdom. By the way, Isaiah 44, 6. Let's, let's take a quick look at that too to reiterate this kingdom idea. Isaiah 44, verse 6, says this. Thus says the Lord, what's he call himself? The King of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel. He also says this, which we'll have to look into sometime. And his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Who's his Redeemer? He's the Lord of hosts, but there's a Redeemer. Who is our Redeemer? So is he talking about Jesus right here? God the Father working with his son, King of Israel and the Redeemer? Interesting. All right. Let's go back to our worksheet here. Second line, middle of the second line on that last part on the page. If God is to have another kingdom, it must be of a blank kind, a different kind. It's got to be different than the physical kingdom. A blank kingdom. Spiritual. I think he created that blank there to emphasize God's talking about a spiritual kingdom. That kingdom that was established after grinding all those other kingdoms to powder is a spiritual kingdom. How long is it going to last, by the way? Forever. The Jews, however, were not looking for a spiritual ruler. In John 6, 15, they tried to, make, or tried to take Jesus by by force, to make him king. Jesus blanked their offer. He refused, denied, declined. Daniel in 244 then prophesies that a blank kingdom is coming. That's the word spiritual again. A spiritual kingdom is coming. It'll be established during the time of the blank blank. It will be established during the time of the Roman Empire. Now, that's, that's its actual establishment. But, but I would even say, because it's, it's worded this way in the dream, during the days of these kings, 
God will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. He was working all along. He was working all through the, the time of Babylon. He was working all through the time of Persia, all through the time of the Greeks. All And in what ways might he have been working? What was happening uh, during the days of the Babylonians? We know because Jeremiah wrote that letter and said, while you're there, do what? Build homes, plant your gardens, get married, have kids. So God is working through the remnant that's in captivity to, to bring that kingdom about. And then when, uh, when Babylon falls to Persia, what's God doing? Well, through Persia, he's bringing them back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls and rebuild the temple. And then what happens during the, the, the time of the Greeks? What do the Greeks do? What language is spoken during the time of the New Testament establishment or the establishment of the New Testament church? The Greek language. So much culture has come along where people appreciate literacy and so they, they learn to read. And what about, did the Romans contribute anything to the spread of the gospel? You ever heard of the Pax Romana? The Romans, yeah, they went everywhere and conquered everything, but they also kept the peace after they conquered. What else did they do? They built roads everywhere. And if you go to Europe, the Mediterranean, you will probably have the privilege of seeing and even walking on some of the roads that the Romans built 2,000 years ago. Now, granted, they don't have 18 wheelers going over them every day. I hear people saying that, well, those Romans built roads that lasted 2,000 years, and ours won't even last six months. We'll put an 18 wheeler over it for eight, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. What the writer is saying is maybe the first century that the, the church was going to kind of start where the head, the word, Christ, has always been there, but at the time of the Roman Empire, it was kind of the beginning of the body, so to speak. Could it be interpreted that way? I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking about the, the, the body and the head, the distinction between those two. As far as when the, the kingdom was you know, kind of starting on earth type thing. Right. Maybe he's talking about the church. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, that's the church. Uh, Pentecost. That's when the kingdom started. As a matter of fact, you, when you're reading up to Pentecost, you're reading about the kingdom in the future. Um, what did Jesus say just before the mountain of transfiguration? He said, there's some of them, some of you standing here who will not taste death until what? Until you see the kingdom of God. In other words, you're not in the kingdom right now, guys. But some of you won't die until you see the kingdom established. I think he was talking about Pentecost. And up until Pentecost, the kingdom's always something talked about in the future. But after Pentecost, the kingdom is here. Colossians chapter 1. Paul writes to the church at Colossae, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You are in the kingdom of God. This is what Daniel was talking about. Think about the privilege we enjoy. Daniel was interpreting this vision of the king about a kingdom that's coming. And when you go back, Peter writes about this and he says something. I, I think it's kind of fascinating what Peter says find this for you real quick. Oh, yeah, we got a few blanks to fill before we finish class, but I, I want you to see this and appreciate it if you haven't already noticed it before. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Because we're talking about the kingdom, but, but the kingdom is given to provide salvation to humanity. And Peter says, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries, seeking to know what person or time the spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you in these things, which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Wow. The prophets were prophesying, but they didn't know. They were just writing down. God was dictating to them. You write this down. They didn't know what it was all about. They were just telling what God gave them to write. And then who else was looking into this? Angels longing to look into the things of the kingdom. And here we sit today in the kingdom of God. We are the fulfillment 
of everything we're reading about in Daniel. Wow, that just, that's pretty powerful stuff. Well, let's fill in the rest of these blanks here before our time is gone. Hold off on that button, Charles. Yeah, really. The Jews, however, were not looking for a spiritual ruler. Oh, they tried to take Jesus by force. He refused them. Spiritual kingdom is coming. It will be established during the days of the Roman Empire. Review of chart. Nebuchadnezzar falls. <laughs> prostrate. Not prostate, but prostrate before Daniel and says to Daniel, your God is the blank of blanks. God of gods. Your God is the God of gods and the blank of blanks. Lord of kings. Imagine this coming from the mouth of a heathen pagan king. And he makes Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar does this, he makes Daniel the blank over the province of Babylon. Who could have seen that coming? God wipes out Judah by the Babylonians because Judah is so evil. But this young man, taken off into captivity, boom, becomes ruler of Babylon. All right, we didn't go over the chart, but you can see what to fill into those blanks. What's on the back side? Are the blanks filled in on the back? That's, I did that as a favor. That chart will help us as we study the rest of the book to see what the rest of those fulfillments are all about. So, so take a look at that chart. Read those other chapters and see if you can see what's, what's being presented through that chart. Any observations, any questions, any commentary? I think this is pretty special stuff. I, I hope you're seeing it too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Love you.